July 28, 1982, 40 years ago, eight children and four adults died in a fiery plane crash in the piney woods of East Texas. The plane was overloaded and out of balance. Why did the pilot make the decisions he did? Was he a villain or a person just like you or me? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Dan Milliken, and a while back, I made a video about the Keith Green crash of July 1982, and you can watch that like here. But for a quick recap, it was a hot Texas early evening in a twin Cessna 414 with tanks loaded for some upcoming concerts for Christian music recording star Keith Green. A family eight was visiting, and Keith offered them a sightseeing plane ride of the Ministry Ranch, and he took two of his small ones, making eight children and four adults, 12 people in the seven seater. And as the pilot rolled down the dirt strip, he rotated, but was slow and, and he porpoised about three times and then pulled up to clear the first set of trees, hit more trees. The plane crashed, exploded, killing everyone aboard. In my research for the earlier video, some of the people involved were easy to find info on. Singer-songwriter Keith Green was the most famous. Even the Smalley family with their eight children I found info on. The person I couldn't find much info on was pilot Don Burmeister. And that will be the subject of this video. And, and one thing before I go on, the, the comments and communications I've received since posting the Keith Green crash story have been well, interesting to say the least, and some downright crazy. You see, no, the Catholics didn't send Jesuit ninjas to sabotage the plane. The, the Pope didn't put the big guy in the back of an overloaded airplane. But some comments have been eye-opening, as I've now talked to a few people who were there that day. Keith Green was not even 30 years old and, and was a force of a person, no doubt a prodigy. He lacked a lot of the social cues that evade some of the brilliant people of this world. He could be very impulsive and he could offend people he was talking to at the drop of a hat. But as he was growing, he was starting to change. And when confronted, he could humbly receive the rebuke. But as aggressive, impulsive, and brilliant, that he was, in a minute you might see why I mention all this before we get to know Pilot Don. By the stories of people that knew Keith Green and worked with him, one thing was clear in my conversations. Keith was no saint, though most of the fans have canonized his work. He was a man and he failed time and time again. But he kept chasing after God and this is what a true Christian life is all about. And at the end of the day, he was a charismatic leader one that you didn't want to let down. And he made sure to press you not to let him down. Okay, now to the pilot. Recently, I got a message from the pilot's sister, Jan Burmeister, who had seen the video I made. And suddenly, a whole wave of information was forthcoming on this previous mystery player in this story. You see, this is the house that Don grew up in. And it's been in the family for several generations and it's outside of St. Louis. We knew that Don had been a pilot in the Marines. We knew that he hadn't completed his training in the 414. We knew his centerline thrust restriction on his multi-rating had only been removed six weeks before. But why did he take 11 others up in a seven-seater? Why did he not balance the load? Well, let's find out more about the man who had the responsibility for this flight, Don Burmeister. This picture? Uh, yeah. This, this one right here, this will make every male aviator jealous and every female <laughs> swoon. I mean, holy cow. <laughs> what movie star does he remind you of? Oh. But he was, he was humble. He wasn't, he, there was he no, wasn't, the, he wasn't the classic. Um, no, 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 the jock, no. Don's family does not disagree or fight the findings of the NTSB, which laid the blame squarely on Don. There are no excuses for the bad calls that Don made that July day in 1982. But I do think that we need to know what kind of man he was so that we can take from this information that can make us better people, better pilots. He was very athletic. He was a diver, a figure diver, but also a football player. Anyway, he would always just do a handstand at the moment, a moment's notice. 
He was uh, so fun like that. A little bit of a show off maybe, but um, very good at well, it. Well, most pilots are. <laughs> very good at it. Matter of fact, during the summer, he used to be a lifeguard at the country club and he would do exhibitions, diving exhibitions and wow all of the young gals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You were saying there was uh, quite a few tears shed at his wedding? Oh yes, all of his former girlfriends sat in the front row and cried their eyes out when he came in in his white uniform and uh, married his little, lovely little Janet. He was funny, he was intelligent, very creative, kind of quiet, a little bit on the quiet side. When did Don decide to uh, be an, an aviator, be a pilot? I think he always loved watching airplanes. Um, I, he, then he went in the military and he, he absolutely wanted to. And once, once he experienced that, you know, slipped the surly bonds of earth, <laughs> touch the, he, he, he was into it for life. And when he went into the corporate world after military retirement, he still was in the reserves and he still wanted to use his, his skills and not lose that. So. Finally, after the, the second corporate job he had, he thought it was time because he had actually been listening to Keith Green's records and his, his faith started coming alive and he was going to a men's Bible study. And he said, I either am going to go into missionary aviation fellowship or this guy, Keith Green, is looking for, for someone to come and work at his ministry and that's the one he picked. So he and Janet moved down there in September of 1981. His job was to build the hangar and the airstrip and then eventually become the pilot. They were using another pilot down there at the time being. So that was all unfolding and he was so happy. He was just so happy. In September of 1981, Don went to work for Keith Green's last day's ministry in Lindale, Texas, east of the Dallas area. And he moved there with his wife and two sons who at the time were age six and eight. You know, what kind of pilot was Don? Well, to become a fighter pilot, you have to be good and you have to be at or near the top. According to his sidekick, Tracy Hansen, he was, he was an excellent pilot. His, when he was in the military, he, he got rave reviews. I think he, he his, uh, the letters that they used to send to my mom and dad saying so, maybe that was what they did to everybody. But because of his personality and his perfectionism and his uh, attention to detail and his wanting to, to do everything right, uh, Tracy said he would have entrusted his whole family to him anytime. I've now been able to talk to some people that were there. Don had woken early in the morning to fly the ministry Cessna 182 to Dallas and had only just gotten back in the early evening. Keith was waiting for him as he got out of the smaller airplane and convinced Don to do the flight with the Smalley family. Everyone at the ministry was fasting for the upcoming concert crusades that day. And again, no excuses. But I've also turned up some internal documents by the NTSB that reveal they were looking at the possible human issues like Keith's overpowering personality, Don's fatigued state. And that was a deadly combination. And he had never taken this plane up by himself. The three hours of left seat were with another pilot in command. As it turned out, this was not the time to do your first flight alone in the 414. There were 12 findings by the NTSB on the crash. Now, eight were the responsibility of pilot Don Burmeister. Don had an overconfidence of his abilities and an overconfidence in the plane's ability. And so this must have been toward the end as well because he's got a beard. This he had is, a beard just this, is, this is June 25th. Oh, this is one month before. Yeah, that's, that's saying goodbye to me <clears throat> in, in Los Angeles. In, so this is the last time you saw Don? Yes, yeah. For now? For now. You know, they had a tough time at first, but uh, I, I remember Eric, uh, six months after the crash, drew a cartoon uh, with three little tombstones on it. And it said Don and Keith and then Keith's two children. And he had little arrows coming out of them saying things. And Keith was saying, I want to be more like Jesus. And Don said, my back doesn't hurt me anymore. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he was a loving dad, very loving. You know, I've made mistakes when I fly. I've made them before. Mm. 
I do worry when I when I hear stories like this and I hear about somebody like Don who was a perfectionist who was somebody who took pride in his work who was really good very good um, it, probably a better aviator than I am um, how easy it is just to make a uh, to make a mistake or a series of mistakes that ends so, so tragically, it's it's a wake up call for me. I guess it just makes me really think, you know. But for the grace of God, there go I. You know, Don Don didn't set out to hurt anybody. No, no. And, and from a layperson's standpoint, I I didn't want people to because it all says pilot error, and mm -hmm. and to those who aren't in aviation, it sounds like he did something wrong with the controls or he, you know, turned the wrong way or he, he did something like that. It was, it was more the judgment calls that were made to even take that trip, to even go up. And that's, it's pilot error, but it's, yeah. it's not mechanical error. Uh, he didn't slip up and turn it the wrong way or... Right. It, it wasn't a skill issue. It wasn't a skill issue that he didn't know how it was, to... It was a mental mistake issue, which is what scares me about myself. What would you have done? If it, were, if it were Keith Green. Oh, I, I want to please people. Yeah. I have no doubt, to some level, I would have, yes sir. I mean, you know, in my own business, when a client calls with an impossible request, my answer is yes, and then I'll go figure out how to make it happen. That's what happened. I gotta be able to say no. You've got to be able to say no. Even to someone that you want to please. Especially someone you want to please. Yeah. The main thing that our family learned was that God's in control mm -hmm. and he's with us uh, when his children are sad. His grace abounds uh, endlessly, just endlessly. And it's as when you lose anyone, it's you, you, you cry and you sob for about a year and then afterwards it's all happy memories and it's uh, it smiles to, it, with remembering and finding something that reminds you. It's, and, and that's the Lord, instead of just bemoaning it for the rest of your life. Like my sister said, I never got to say goodbye to him. And it's like, well, you didn't have to. You're going to see him. That's why you can't say, we lost my brother. Lost means you don't know where something is and whether you'll ever see it again. And that's not true with Don. So. Or any of the 12 that were on there. That's right. It was refreshing to see how the family has turned sadness to joy. Don Burmeister was a pilot, just like you and me. He didn't have a history of recklessness. He had a track record of smart, careful piloting learned from years of wartime flying in the Marine Corps during Vietnam. You know, he made the wrong call that day and the results were devastating. But here's the thing, I know and realize I'm probably a heartbeat away from making a bad judgment call and it scares me. I make some of my worst calls when I'm tired, stressed, hungry. So far, my bad calls haven't cost me or others. This is a wake-up call to stay vigilant on myself. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I hope you take away something that makes you a better person or pilot. I do want to thank our sponsors, and I hope that you can support us by buying from them. Flying Eyes Glasses, you get 10% off using Taking Off. That's all caps, one word. Colton Mortgage, it's run by an aviator. ColtonTakingOff.com for that residential mortgage and Marshall Protective Services. These are the good guys. So I hope you can visit them. Remember, superior judgment trumps superior skills and never as evident as in this story. So take care and please stay safe.